Hey guys, Ken for Veteran Screen Printing. Today we're going to show you guys from start to finish on how to screen print. From coating your screens, to burning your screens, to washing it out, to setting up the job, printing it, and then also how to um, reclaim your screen. All in one video. So stay tuned. After the intro, we're going to get into this. So first and foremost, you need to um, coat your screens so you can uh, burn your image. Um, what you're going to need is you're going to need a scoop coater, okay, um, and then you're going to need a motion. Now we use a motion that is already ready to go for the most part. You just kind of kind of have to shake it. And this one that we use is for plaster saw and for water base um, because we do a lot of poly mailers and um, we use acrylic ink for poly millers. Um, so this is the one that we use right here, guys. Um, this is the Chromaline Chromatech uh, WR, so you guys can see that. And that's the one that we use personally uh, in the shop. And um, there's tons of different ones out. We have a link below where you can actually pick it up on uh, um, Amazon. And, um, and it's still chromaline. So let's show you guys on how you can coat your screens or how we coat our screens. And we have, we've never had an issue with how we coat them. There's some people that actually put it against the wall and you know, um, you know, scoop coat it onto the screen. Um, I just hold it and then do it that way. So let's go in and dive into that one. So before you guys actually, you know, do anything, I kind of just take my bucket, turn it around a little bit. Now I wear gloves just so it's easy to, you know, wipe off. Um, so on a scoop coater, you guys actually have a sharp side and a rounded side. We use a rounded side anytime we put it on. So. Pretty much just dump it into the scoop coater. Now I'm actually going to be coating around like six screens today just because I actually have a six color job that I actually have to set up. So I will actually walk you through how I actually set up a six color. And it's the same if you're doing a one color, two color, three color, so on and so forth. So little ink I just rub it around because now it's dry for the most part and now I'm gonna coat the screens all right guys kind of can see me kind of can't so again um, there's two edges put this down real quick there's two edges on a scoop coater you got a round side and a sharp side we always use the rounded side and I hold it right in the middle and again you can put this against the wall and then use both hands but I hold my screen at an angle like this and I just start on the bottom and I slide up then flip it over start on the bottom and go all the way up now we get it to the top, I kind of rock it back, let the motion come down, and then scrape off. So that is one screen fully coated. Now when I put it in my drying rack, I flip it where you put the ink at. Flip it upside down. See if you guys can see this a little bit, but I pretty much just put it in my drying rack like that, where the ink is would go. So that would be on the top and put it in. And now when you're coating screens, it doesn't really matter what side you start with um, as long as you do both sides, right? And you could do two on both sides, but we only do one. So just 
putting it through. Another one down. And we have a yellow soft light in here. So it won't actually damage the, the motion. This is our kind of one our one room. We do our coating in here, we do our burning in, in here, and we do our washing in here. Another one. Kind of been going through screens like crazy the last couple days. We uh, this job has a six color front, six color back, and I also next job I have a five color front, five color back, and then uh, of course we have about a thousand polymellers print for customers. And actually, the customer found us from YouTube, so. Appreciate that. So keep on coating these screens. The last one. Hopefully I put enough in here. The reason why I like doing it to the side like this is I can see as soon as the, the motion is actually, you know, uh, hit the screen, there's kind of like a little glare on it. And I can tell when the, the motion's already been in there. So, once I have that, um, once I have the screens in here, I just turn on my little heat gun. Put that in there. I close my drying booth with a tarp and uh, we just let it um, sit there and dry. Um, this drying booth can fit up to seven, sometimes eight screens, depending on how I want to set it up. But this is a little DIY my cousin made for us and it works perfect. Now, you're gonna probably ask, what do you do with this? I do have a little bit of motion left in here. So you wanna take your little bit of emotion you have, right? Put it back in your bucket, scoop it out. That's why I wear gloves. So I can just use my finger and just scoop all of it out. Right back into the bucket. Seal it back up. Now, you gotta clean this out. Don't leave it sitting like this. Clean it up. So I'll take it to the wash booth. And that's what we're gonna do now. So follow us over there. So at the wash out booth, I just take it, put it in the sink. And I don't turn on my pressure washer. I just let the water uh, run through it without the pressure washer being on. And I just spray it down. To the point where it's actually clean there's no uh, motion now again you're not going to get all of it right so but the idea is to get most of it off so it's not going to leave any grooves or anything especially on the rim where you're going down on your screen um so you just want to make sure everything is off and that's about it Now I just sit here and I let it, you know, 
uh, dry pretty much. We're waiting for the screens to dry. So we'll check back in when they're dry and we will burn the images for this. And I'll show you how to do that and then we'll wash them out and show you how to do that next. All right guys, so we pretty much, the screens are dry. Again, we're burning a six color job. Um, and this is just a video to show you from start to finish, but we're gonna show you, you know, us burning six colors and then setting it up and, and printing. And again, this works with one color, two color, three color, on um, so forth. Um, what I like to do is when I grab all my film, since I keep most of my film in stock, if it's, you know, for a customer that orders this design repeatedly or um, if it's for my own clothing brand. Again, this is for my own clothing brand, but I like to, when I grab the film, I like to verify with my registration marks on the film and line them all up because what if I printed an extra one one time or um, one was messed up and I printed another one, uh, a whole nother set of, you know, six, you know, films and I grab the wrong one and um, it won't line up when I get on press. So, you know, before I even come in here, I just verify with my registration marks. I line up the registration marks with the film and make sure they line up properly. Um, that's a good rule of thumb in case uh, you grab the wrong film, right? Um, so let's get this over here and start burning screens. Now, with burning screens, it, it varies from everybody, okay? Um, how hot it is, the humidity, your distance from your light. Um, again, this is our DIY um, exposure unit, two by fours and a black light. The black light we have on a, in the description below where you can buy this. And um, we also have another video to show you how you get your perfect burn time. Um, right now, our perfect burn time is about 27, se uh, 27 seconds. And um, it works perfectly for everything that we've ever burnt now. And um, and then when we burn it, we'll take you over to the wash out booth and show you on how we wash it out. Again, we do not use the pressure washer uh, turned on. We just let the water go. And if you do you in half tones, we actually take off the nozzle that makes it spray a little bit harder and just let the water run dr down it and, and soak that emotion up. and. Let the emotion uh, kind of just rinse away because you don't want, I, I don't want too much pressure and blow out my, my half tones. Um, this design don't have half tones, so I can't show you that. But maybe on a different video, we'll show you when we go to wash out half tones that we really don't actually turn on the pressure washer. We don't even really like to have the nozzle on to make it um, a really hard type of impact on the screen. So let's grab the screen and start burning. Now when I do my screens, um, I set it up, I grab my T-square, okay? Now I know all my registration marks are going to be the same. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to set my cross uh, registration at the very top at 21 inches, which is actually 3 inches down from the T-square. So. I know that on every single um, of my other screens, if I line up the top registration at 21 inches or 3 inches, um, it will be um, universal on all my screens. Okay, so now I got both of my registrations lined up. It's perfectly straight. I'm happy with that. From there, I grab a non-UV um, piece of glass that got from Home Depot. They're about 10 bucks. I lay it down and then I turn on my exposure unit for 27 seconds and I grab my phone for a little timer. I turn the light on and then I start the time. All right, so the time is done. I just turned it off. Take off the piece of glass. Take off the film set it aside. Now let's take you over to the washout booth and show you how we wash it out. All right. Set that up in my washout booth. Turn on the water. And I do have the nozzle on. 
but I don't have the pressure washer actually turned on. So now we can just sit here and actually wash it out. So fully washed out, I throw it back into the dry box to dry while I'm burning other screens and probably in about 20 minutes everything should be dry and ready to line up on the press and get printing. Alright so I have my film on here and I bring it down and pretty much I'm lining up all my registration marks on this. Now I've never have had a press with micro registrations um, so I don't know what it feels like to have that here it's awesome though but I've never had one so I just verify that everything is lined up which is not but I do have on my press I do have where I can adjust it and I can move it in um, a three inch circle. But I have to tap it in. So I could pretty much over um, tap it or, you know. So once I feel like it is good, I grab the next screen. And we're gonna use yellow. So this job is white for under base, yellow, red, blue, brown and black. So quite a bit of colors, but we get it done. And again, this is for my personal brand, War Pick Apparel, so. I was running a little bit low on this design, so I'm only printing about 12 of them up, and you might kind of uh, say why are you only printing 12 well I only need 12 right now I would normally print about 48 but for this video we're gonna print about 12 so you just go through and pretty much line them all these so we'll speed through this and uh, keep setting up and uh, when we get to the next part, we'll bring you in.
All right, so we have all the screens set up um, as close as possible. Time to tape them off, and then we're gonna do our test print. Now we use uh, just regular blues painter tape. Um, reason why is I found it very easy to get when you run low on the weekends, and you can always find it at your local hardware store. So just regular blues painter tape, and uh, that's what we use and uh it hasn't failed us yet and we even use it for acrylic ink when uh, we're doing 100 to 300 runs of polymelter so it works very well for us so we'll speed through this and uh show you guys when we do our test print So now it's time to put the ink in the screens and uh, do our test print. So let's run through this real quick and get the ink in.
just so I can see if there's anything I mess up personally in the, the setup. Um, but what's really good about doing the transfer tape is if I messed up, I can actually wipe that away and adjust it and then redo it again. So, looking good. Again, you can just wipe off this ink and move on to the next one. But when I'm doing multicolor like this, I like to see the full design. See if I, there's anything I messed up on in the process. And there might be. Just never know. And I bought that big roll of tape a long time ago. And uh, it's working so far. Looking good. So this design is actually going on a OD military green shirt. Kind of a uh, a remake from first time Fourth Marines. Served with them when I was in the Marine Corps. Alright, last color. Everything came out perfect. I want to change anything on this. Let's bring it around and take a look at this. Perfect all the way around. I'm going to um, Peel this off so you guys can actually see it a little bit better. But before I do that, when you get a really good color or a really good print on something multicolor like this, it's sometimes it's kind of cool just to keep in and show people, right? So I could put an RP tape on that, and now I have my complete design right there there you guys go take a look at that so I'm gonna move on and I'm actually going to do some printing and I'll keep you guys in the on a speed thing so you can see the process of printing um, and uh, and you guys can see exactly how it looks to actually print on the shirt. Um, but yeah, there you guys go. Came out beautiful. And again, no, no micro registrations on this, guys. I lined it up. It took me once to line up. I didn't have to adjust nothing. As you guys seen that, I did not adjust one time. So can you do multicolor without micro registrations? yeah um can you get by without having them yeah this press right here guys i bought on uh craigslist for 500 bucks now granted reason why i bought it for 500 dollars is i actually knew who made this and um i bought stuff from him in the past so when i seen this press it has it had his colors 
and I knew from the get-go that it was his. Um, and his press doesn't have micro registration, but he does have a lifetime warranty on it, and he actually, his shop is about an hour away from me. So if anything breaks, I could take it to him. And, um, and uh, yeah, the guy on Craigslist said he uh, was getting out of screen printing. Um, so, granted guys, if you're just getting started, look on Craigslist, look on OfferUp, look on Facebook Marketplace. Because I bought this press for $500 and this press right here is over a couple thousand dollars. Now it ain't as expensive brand new from, you know, the Ryanet or Anatol or whatever. But if you have the money, then go get those, 100% get them. Uh, my preference right now is I've been looking at the Anatol, I've been talking to the rep. Um, but I haven't really made up my mind yet because I do use a lot of Ryanet stuff, like their platens and stuff. So kind of still tossed up before when we get into uh, buying our next press, what we're going to buy. But um, if you're just starting off, you can do multicolor on a press that has no micros, as you guys have seen. First, didn't have to adjust anything, right? Just set it up, lined it, keep going. So let's uh, get some shirts on this and we'll kind of fast forward you guys through that while we're uh, printing so you guys get to see the you know the outcomes. guys so that's gonna be it for today's uh, video of how to screen print of course when you're done I still got some more to print but when you're done you clean up all that ink and uh, you would reclaim these screens if you're not gonna use them again um, in another video we'll show you guys how to reclaim screens um, so same design on the back as is in the front there you guys go Another thing is, is when you guys are doing under base, um, you only need to hit once. All right, so you hit it, flash it, move on to the next color. Don't hit your under base twice, okay? If you hit your under base twice, it's gonna make your whole design a lot heavier than it really needs to be. And it's gonna be hot and just overall, it's, it's not gonna be a good fit for when you're screen printing. And then when you have to wear it or if you're trying to sell it to a customer. So those are little tips that we do here and this is how you screen print from start to finish pretty much. Um, once you're done, you throw it through the conveyor dryer. If you don't have a conveyor dryer, you can do a flash dryer. Um, again, that flash dryer is one that we purchased. Uh, I have a link below where you can buy it for $700. It's just like a quartz uh, forced air, um, except without the, the, the bang, the, the, the big money, the brand name. 
but you can pick that out on Amazon for $700. It has six bulbs, turns on and uh, off by itself with the auto sensor, and it has two fans forced in. And it has three different zones, so you can do the top, middle, and the bottom. Or you can just do the top, or you can just do the top two, however you want to do it. But for $700, you can't beat it. It's just like a coarse flash iron. Um, but you can, fly, you can cure your shirts under that. When we first started, we started with a heat gun and then a uh, heat press after we dried it, the ink to the touch. So when you're first starting off, definitely look at the things that you, you know, how much money you have to spend in this industry. Um, and then you can grow very fast from there as long as you reinvest your money. So if you guys have any questions, please leave them below or you can email them in the, the link. If you guys like these designs from More Pig Apparel, again, this is our, our personal brand that we have. Um, there is a 15% off in the description where you can go to our website, warpigapparel.com, and purchase this. Um, and again, if you guys got questions, please email them, leave them below. We'll definitely get to all the questions um, and reply, or we'll do a video and show you how to actually do something. Um, and if you haven't done it please subscribe we're definitely increasing every uh, week um, and if you can please like this video if you haven't already and share it if you think it's helpful and as well like always please be safe and have fun out there